emergency meeting, that strong words of condemnation have been used before. Do you think the Arab League means action this time? I mean, the thing we heard um, earlier, the Palestinian Authority former Foreign Minister uh, Riyad Maliki talk about um, having seen these scenes playing out before at the Arab League um, with its condemnation of, of Israeli aggression. And in fact, the whole situation must feel like a kind of gruesome groundhog day for Palestinians uh, now stuck um, with uh, increasing uh, Israeli uh, assault on the Gaza Strip. Um, and Palestinians, I mean, you know, the Arab League gave lots of supportive words and solidarity, but Palestinians must be wondering um, what they're going to provide beyond that. They might also be noting the irony of the Arab League Secretary General talking about having to um, stop having uh, empty meetings to talk about the situation. And uh, they might also have noted that it took three days for the Arab League to convene this emergency meeting. But of course, the trouble with all of this is that the international community is play pacing really unfair pressure on Egypt at the moment. Um, it is asking Egypt to uh, try and uh, de-escalate the situation by placing uh, pressure on Hamas. But there is no equivalent pressure being placed on Israel to do the same by the international community. If anything, it has a green light to continue with its actions. Uh, the Arab League uh, Secretary General uh, calling on the UN Security Council to step up and take responsibility. Do you see that uh, happening anytime soon? Um, again, it's, it's hard to see. I mean, the Arab League seems to be stuck in a narrative that belongs to a different time, albeit that the situation in the Middle East has now changed. And of course, they are sending um, various representatives of um, Arab League nations into Gaza to meet with um, the Hamas leadership there to, to, to show that the dynamics of diplomacy have changed. But then again, we hear them talking about, you know, the peace process and reviving that and 67 borders and so on. And it does seem a bit um, far removed from the situation on the ground where, you know, the peace process is really dead and buried and the conversation needs to shift from there in, an, in order to, to end uh, Palestinian suffering and uh, uh, occupation. How far do you think Israel will take the conflict this time? We've got, uh, we've seen them starting to move tanks and other military hardware nearer the border with Gaza. 75,000 reservists on standby. Do you think a land invasion is inevitable from where you're sitting? It's really difficult to tell. I mean, Bibi uh, Netanyahu is a man of bluster. We can see how much he escalated uh, the rhetoric um, when it came to talking about an, uh, attacking Iran. It's very difficult to know whether um, this sort of uh, the amassing of reservists, um, having 75,000 reservists available, which is a huge number, whether that is just bluster, whether it's just um, saying to Hamas, you know, don't even think about it, you need to de-escalate now, or whether having got that in action, he's now in a position where he's going to find it very difficult to step down from that. And of course, that is the problem with this situation now, is that escalation brings its own momentum and makes it very difficult for people to step down from that. Thank you very much indeed uh, once again for joining us. Rachel Shabi, uh, author and journalist, speaking to us from London. And, uh,